Even men at the top of their game find themselves wanting more from life, whether it's more meaning, unshakable confidence, a bigger impact, more money, deeper love, a hotter sex life, or a powerful legacy. Find out how good your life can be on this episode of Man Alive. Also, as I've supported men in their love and work lives for 15 years now, many men ask for the right words to say to be more successful, attractive, and desirable. But I found it's not so simple as giving scripts or lines because every man is different. So giving words or scripts would be like giving a tall, thin man a shorter, wider man's pants or vice versa. The words have to make sense for you and your personality, and there's so much happening beneath the surface that people are responding to. If you're interested in how to become a better lover and leader in your own unique way, go to shanajamescoaching.com slash quiz, or you can text ALIVE to 44144. It only takes a couple minutes and you'll start to get an idea of how you can be both more respected and desired. After you fill it out, we can schedule a time to review your quiz and talk about your specific challenges and desires. So again, go to either shanajamescoaching.com slash quiz or text ALIVE to 44144. That's A-L-I-V-E to 44144. Enjoy this episode of Man Alive. Hello, and welcome to this episode of Man Alive. I am so excited to be here today with Jesse Krieger. Jesse, welcome. Thanks so much, Shana. Nice to see you again. Yeah, I am excited to talk about the freedom and adventurous lifestyle that you've had while also being an entrepreneur. And so having an impact on the world and doing work in the world and actually making money while traveling and having adventure. It sounds so thrilling, especially me as a parent of a nine-year-old. I haven't had a lot of adventure these days. Most of us haven't, you know, being in the pandemic right now. Um, So life might be a little bit different for you in this moment, but I'm really excited to hear, you know, how you've created your life and your business to be able to be where you want and when you want and still have a really powerful impact on the world. Yeah. Great question. I'm going to dial back the clock a little and give this context. Yes, since that's what I was going to say. I think it would be really that's helpful. Great. Like from a young age, I fell in love with music, um, got my Fender Strat at 13. My dad gave me and he played guitar nice. and I just kind of went all in. So my first real passion was music. And so after high school, I went to Los Angeles Music Academy, which was like one year, no academics, just music. And 80% of the student body was international. So Wow. Without having like really traveled internationally that much, I was learning about people from Japan and Germany and India, and I got curious. So after that, um, and there was a whole experience there, but we'll table it. Like I went to Europe and backpacked with some friends for a couple months. Yeah. And at the end of that trip, I quite honestly decided to skip my ticket home and take a shot at being like a street musician and performer in Vienna, nice. Austria, awesome. and in Europe. So this was like my hard left early in life where I never even really got onto this traditional career path. Yeah. Not that I ever really wanted to, but I kind of traced back to that decision and the winding road of entrepreneurship, travel, language, and cultural experiences as just a continuation of being, of following my intuition and following what it is I'm passionate about. Yeah. The entrepreneur piece overlaying, like how can that have a business model or at least be self-supporting Yes. And then that just depends how glamorous you want to live or at that well, time. Well, I love 20- this. And you know, I, what I'm loving is the courage that you had from such a young age. I'm I'm seeing myself too. I was traveling in India and Nepal and Thailand by myself in my early 20s. And when I think about now being in my 40s versus then and having children and responsibility and all that, like, you know, it's not as easy anymore. And so I'm curious, right? How have you overlaid that entrepreneurship and how have you shifted into, okay, life has more responsibilities than it did then. You know, you're looking forward to retirement in your future and (laughs) you're still living the lifestyle. Yeah. Uh, Retirement, sorry, gave me a laugh because I don't know why. I just, I kind of see myself doing what I'm doing forever. Forever. Maybe that itself will evolve. Um, Or maybe maybe as I'm thinking of the listeners who are looking forward, right, to where they need to get to. I mean, of course, there are stages in life. And like, we're in my 20s. And what I wrote my book, Lifestyle Entrepreneur About, was really like marrying this desire to travel in large part, but 
really getting clear on like your interests and passions in turn, how that forms one's identity and then ways to leverage that to have businesses. Uh-huh. So in, you know, back then in my twenties, that was like living in hostels, traveling Europe, a fairly low class lifestyle, but high yeah. enjoyment, high fun. Yeah. So like stages in life. Now I, I run a business, I have payroll, I have certain responsibilities and things scheduled out. So there's less spontaneous, oh, I'm going to go to another country tomorrow type of approach. But I realized the same, actually more creative enjoyment, working with and being involved in and supporting dozens of authors each year throughout their journey and kind of living a little vicariously through each of those. So I think that's one way that things have kind of shifted and adapted. Well, and it sounds like you now, you it's not as spontaneous, but you plan and strategize your life around moving and being in different places. Yeah. I mean, especially over this last year, I really have a new appreciation for like a tighter radius of life. Like yeah. I set up my place. So I've got a garden and like this pool and a productive office. So I can do a little lap around the premises and it's like, I took you feel a tra- like you've traveled the world. A yeah. <laughs> and then I could just refresh in between five, six, seven, sometimes eight, meetings or engagements or activities each day. And, and that becomes enjoyable as like a creative pulse or a productive pulse. Yeah. It isn't sitting in a commute and being in an office with politics. Right. It's dealing with the issue at hand and moving a number of projects forward without actually going anywhere. It's kind of well, a trip. Yeah. I think this is so important because whether a man feels stuck at home or stuck in a certain job, there are ways to you know, work in creativity and adventure and meaning, right? And so I could see a couple things here. One, how would a man who hasn't been entrepreneurial start to create this kind of lifestyle And some of those seem like they could be, like you just said, right? Like I'm creating my surroundings such that I can feel lit up and passionate and adventurous. Is that a step to the bigger lifestyle? Yeah, I'll I'll touch on your first point of like, how does somebody who may feel trapped and isn't really entrepreneurial take those first steps? Yeah, great. My best advice is start a project, do some creative endeavor where you're the boss, so to speak, where you whatever it is you want to do, you go on a site like Upwork or 99designs or even Fiverr and hire and manage one or more people to create something for you where it's totally your own creative expression and you get to manage other people. Yeah, And that's like dipping your toe in the water. You could take that quite a few steps further of having ongoing relationships to do certain kind of work. Yeah. Like when we were starting, we had teams that did cover design and teams that could do layout and formatting for books, and just a patchwork of contractors. And then from there, you can even find people that you may do like an ongoing or build a business off of or out of. Mm -hmm. So the first step, I think, is just getting your hands on the wheel of steering the ship with any idea, taking it through to completion. And I quite believe that if you're working for someone else or part of moving another organizational vision forward, you have to get your hands on it yourself to feel what it's like to go from idea, implementation, management, execution. But yeah. then that skill set's applicable across almost all across business. Across the board, right. Yeah. So you have a publishing company now, Lifestyle Entrepreneurs Press, is that right? That's it. Yeah, right behind you. I love it. <laughs> and you started with having, it sounds like, collaborations and consultants and things, and then actually grew so that more of your business is in-house. Yeah. So just completing that timeline, right? Like that adventure throughout the 20s, starting a few businesses, traveling three to four months internationally a year, learning Russian, Chinese, German, culminated in writing Lifestyle Entrepreneur. Because enough people were asking, like, what is your approach? What are you doing? How are you doing this? (laughs) And so that experience, I didn't publish my own book. I worked with a publisher in Asia, did a whole book tour, became number two business bestseller in Malaysia and Singapore, and then updated the book and it came out in the US. So I was going through this process of being an author with two different publishers, sparked the idea that I've never been able to let go of, that there's room for innovation and a creative approach in book publishing. Um, So for me, it started informally advising authors that were asking what I did. 
Then they started to say, can you do it for me? So I started offering done for you publishing. But at that time, it was just like an Amazon launch and we'd do it through, you know, just like a self-publishing account. Yeah. But two and a half years in and 25 some books later, we got our first distribution deal with Midpoint, 18 months of surviving that whole shift into <laughs> scheduling releases and having inventory and all that. We landed now with Ingram and Ingram Publisher Services, Ingram Content Group is our partner and one of the largest book providers in the world. And so that happened in six years. In book years, maybe that's a fast growth for a publishing company. Yeah, it sounds but really like fast. All the major publishing companies are 120 plus years old. So wow. it's like, it, it's an interesting industry to be in, dating back to even Gutenberg, right? A 500 year old industry, but it's evolving and growing and changing and provides insight into all the ideas and content in the world. Yeah. When you think about it, that's what books are. Yeah. And what was your idea? Like, how did you innovate? What was the innovation that you brought to publishing? I think one of the biggest things is focusing on crowdfunding and pre-launch campaigns. Mm -hmm. Now our publishing model, it used to be a paid service, but now we'll partner with certain authors with no money out of pocket, but do a crowdfunding campaign on a platform. <laughs> of ours that bundles up their business idea with their book idea. Nice. So like, you know, you could pre-order a book for $20, but maybe for $200, you get three books and a call with the author or uh -huh. $500, you get a training program, $1,000, you get a retreat or an event. And in such a way, we're positioning the book as a business development tool and as like an anchor for what they want to be known about, what they want to be focused on, what kind of clients they want to work with over the next one to three years. Beautiful. And, and it's a holistic approach, which I didn't, that was what I saw as missing was going missing. through yeah. as an author was like, there's such an opportunity to be supported and for that to turn into so much more, but it takes work quite honestly and yeah. energy and attention to give a deeper level of support. Yeah. Yeah. And you talk about mission, vision, action, and product, right? Where would someone start, like we're saying, the man who hasn't really been entrepreneurial, he's going to start a project. Would he start with getting clear on his mission? Yeah. So within the book, I have a framework I call it a vision map. So like vision, then mission, action, product. Okay. So vision and first. Yeah. And so the vision drives the map, which is the lay of the land that gets you there. But I would think of the vision and mission, you know, I tried to separate that in the book where vision's like, overall for your life, or it's an outcome, and it's something that mm -hmm. is aspirational, which could be disconnected from the mission, which is specifically what you're going to do that adds value to the market to bring about a result and the freedom and so forth to, to realize that vision, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? So if your vision is to travel three or four months a year and have a remote business that you can run from anywhere in the world, which is what my book was about, then your mission could be any specific business vertical or any specific revenue generating activity. Right. And that's how I look at the distinction. So that mission in turn drives the action plan and the product is just the end result or how you manage if you're doing it right and uh -huh. giving you that gauge or a dashboard to live into the vision. And mm -hmm. that's a beautiful thing when you see that process all the way through because you change, you grow in that yeah. process as well. So it's so exciting. I can feel yeah. the, the power of the freedom and the adventure and knowing, oh, you don't have to actually have something you're necessarily really good at, or it doesn't have to come from all of the skills you've developed in your career. It could be a total 180 or something you were passionate about when you were young that you let go of. Yeah, I, I'll, I give an example. This might like clarify, you know, yeah. I did a business, I had a business called USB Superstore. And it was one that I featured in the book. And honestly, I'm happy to give a free copy of the book to everyone watching this. So we oh, can link that. Nice. Up. But I had a business that did like promotional flash drives, promotional products, wholesale flash drives. And so and we did manufacturers in China, and then drop ship to customers all over the world. Yeah. And I wasn't passionate about flash drives, right? Yes. So this is thing where people like, do what you're passionate about. I was passionate about the structure of the business that let yeah. me 
both visit China because I was studying Chinese at the time. Mm -hmm. And so here's a great reason and a great way to really learn and, and practice Chinese yep. combined with the structure of the business I was passionate about, because this is in 2008 and nine. Now it's more commonplace to have a totally virtual business, but then- But back then it wasn't. A little earlier stage, although yeah. people were still doing it. Yeah. So I'd, I'd say get clear on which aspects you're passionate about. Yeah. It doesn't have to be making money specifically on the thing you're passionate about. I like that, that there could be a separation, right? There could be things you do for passion that aren't necessarily money makers or things you do that are money makers, but they're not directly where your passion is. Or it's like, a, yeah, it's it's an interwoven. It's like yes. a component instead of the whole thing. Yes. The whole gelato would be if I was a travel blogger and I was going to live blog all of my travels and yep. studying language, that would be a direct correlation instead yep. of like a business that supports it and augments it, Yes, but stands on its own merit, regardless of whatever I'm doing with my lifestyle. Awesome. Awesome. And how do you help people get clear? Or maybe, I don't know if you do this or, but you imagine you've done it for yourself on that vision, that first piece. That's, that is the million dollar question, isn't it? Because <laughs> It's similar to asking, you know, what do you want? What do you really want? What does that really look like? And yeah. how much can you envision or get clarity on how your your life, not just a metric like a number or a dollar amount or a number of countries, but what is the nature of the experience you want to be living into? Mm -hmm. That's how I think of vision, right? Yeah. So I shared my vision back then of traveling and being able to study culture and not be constrained by like a, a work environment. Yeah. Now it's like advancing the frontiers of knowledge across all of the books and authors we support. Wow. And that's something that can be constantly lived into. So a vision is different than like a destination. I think of it. It's right. more of like an emerging, an emerging property or characteristic. I love that seeing it differently, right? That it doesn't have to be specifically, oh, I'm I'm going there. It's right, there's something that you value, something you believe in, and actually stepping toward it, taking action toward it. Exactly. And then that's that action and product that on the map, mission, yeah. action, product, that's where you measure and improve the effectiveness or the efficiency of whatever is funding this bigger vision. Yeah. But I love, I think it's very fascinating to distinguish like a vision being something that's ongoing, whereas the uh -huh. operational side of business, it can be learned, it can be mastered, it can be managed, and it can be implemented almost anywhere. So it's like its own skill set. And that's what yeah. I tried to unpack yeah. as well in the book. I love that. What are some of the challenges you've faced along this lifestyle entrepreneurial journey? You know, at some point in this process of like being entrepreneurial, I've probably run into most of the mistakes, most <laughs> of the hardships, getting into business with the wrong people, uh -huh. getting into business with the right people, but maybe the wrong reason or the wrong business, and then mm -hmm. things not working out or becoming contentious or losing money. You know, the heartache, the long nights, the all, all of it. I find this entrepreneurship is such a great reflection of our own personal growth and, oh my God, yes. and transformative Agreed. process. So I've been in that process. Sometimes it feels glorious when things are working out or make a big milestone or accomplish something. And sometimes it feels horrible yep. and doubt creeps in and confidence gets shaken. But somewhere in there is an equilibrium. And it's like, how do you stay riding the wave? Or like, yeah. don't. So I guess the thing, the hardship for me is like, girding myself further when it feels extra hard or when uh -huh. I'm tempted to quit. At this point in my life, what does quit even mean? Like right. what, what else would I actually do? <laughs> or I'm unemployable. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like just committed to making it work. And I guess that's the tempering side to like any number of things that can and will go wrong. Yes. It's not all, I'm not here to say it's all like roses and rainbows to travel the world and do adventurous things. That does sound fun. And it is. And you, and. It's how much are you willing to go through and process to have those experiences and enjoy them when you are. Right. Right. And when you're in those moments that you said like, okay, the equilibrium is off 
or you're not sure what's next, your confidence gets shaken, what are some of the things that you do that men listening could do? Yeah, it's a great question. Like I do, I picture it as sort of a pendulum mm -hmm. that swings and, but not always just steadily back and forth. So I think of the, <laughs> I, I see that's like <laughs> shaking all over the place. <laughs> Sometimes that's for sure the case. I think of it as like, if I've got the vision, then I get to start pushing the pendulum away. I get to take on more pressure or yeah. have more, you know, work being exerted until it gets the momentum and swings into the uh, place I want to go. So it's like, think of it as aiming the bow before firing or applying the pressure before the release. Yep. The release jets me into where I want to go but I'm clear that I've got to tackle and address whatever the difficult parts are to unlock that. Yeah. And so I'd say, just don't try and skip steps. Like don't think, okay, I decided I'm going to start a business and two weeks later, everything's amazing and there's no problems. Then you're just setting yourself up for an unrealistic expectation. So right. Right. The embrace realism. The, embrace yeah. the process is what I'm saying. I like that. Embrace the process. And the realism seems really important. You know, having been an entrepreneur for almost 20 years myself, it's like, right, the ups and downs, the uncertainties, it's, there's a lot of freedom and adventure and there's less stability I've found. But some of that less stability is actually in my mind more than in the outside world. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. I think it was, was it Mark Twain that said, I've worried about a great number of things, none of which have ever come to pass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. And Working with that, the mind. That's the mental game mm -hmm. with this. Like, I feel fortunate that I have an entrepreneurial dad who encouraged me to like explore and on occasion was a landing pad if something went really south. Nice. But for other people that may have to overcome like non-supportive parents or growing up environments or any other kind of adversity. That's why the people I admire most are the ones that like transformed from the most adverse circumstances yeah. to having equivalent amount of freedom, opportunity, et cetera. It's yeah. possible. It's possible for anybody starting from any, any place. Yeah, so that feels true. And there, but... I was just thinking that some of the most successful entrepreneurs I know seem to be the ones who are willing to take the biggest risks, not dumb risk, but, you know, to put their house on the line or their, you know, whatever it may be, or to invest in their future. And I keep, I'm, I've been watching that, right? Like looking at myself, oh, are there ways that I'm holding back or acting out of fear in my own business? And so I'm curious what your relationship was with risk taking. I love that question. Gosh, that gets me excited. You know, <laughs> I feel like the results are often commensurate with the level of investment yeah. and risk. You could call it risk, but I think of it as how all in, like, am I really? Yeah. And if I'm just a little bit in, then maybe I'm spending an hour a day, twice a week, researching a new idea and getting something going. Mm -hmm. That's low risk. Yeah. And let's be honest, it's low reward, potential reward, yep. but it can be useful for what it is. Whereas if I'm all in, I am taking advantage of my credit. Uh, I am asking and raising for money if I need it, or I'm investing out of savings to get things going. Yep. And that level of investment commitment and increased risk certainly can catalyze great growth faster than faster than what most people might be possible in terms of like revenue growth and opportunities and access. But that's a function of being way more in than it is like kind of dabbling and exploring. And at some point you get to choose to make a commitment and choose to reaffirm and deepen that commitment. And I think that's a big part of the game, like after the starting gate, right. in terms of different levels of growth and scale, it's, you know, do I want to take on the additional responsibility and weight of say 50 people on payroll versus five and mm -hmm. have time freedom and accomplish good things. And that becomes a choice that we all get to continue to make. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> Is there anything we missed in that, that you said that question excited you? Anything about risk that we, we missed there? It excites me because I know that it's always the answer. Meaning huh. if I'm in doubt, then I'm looking at, okay, well, where am I hedging? Am I looking for a back door? Yeah. Am I like one step away from bolting? Or 
am I being called to a higher level to play a bigger game? Mm -hmm. And in turn, that means, you know, playing with bigger players and taking bigger swings. Like yeah. you could use any, any type of analogy for it, but it's the one thing I really picked up in my time in Asia and studying Chinese is they, they think and operate in like a trajectory. So I get excited if I'm in the right trajectory, even if it feels tough or if I'm being challenged, uh -huh. I know deeper down that I'm moving in the right direction then that's where I, I draw strength from. Whereas if I feel I'm being pulled or trapped or cornered into a direction or activity I don't like, then yeah. it's going down a negative path. And that I try and avert at all costs because yeah. it leads to a dark place and that's not where we want to be. No, definitely not. <laughs> Thank you. This is fantastic. What haven't we covered that feels important? I mean, a man alive, right? This is at the core of feeling alive, I believe is, is connecting the dots from a vision to like we discussed a mission of what you're actually up to and doing and known for and add value to how that looks in action and what are the end results. Aligning those things will give you a greater sense of feeling alive and, and there's no limit to where you can take that. So yeah, I resonate with feeling alive. It's one of my like core values of Nice. continuing to feel creative and excited about whatever the next day holds. So hope everybody got an experience of that through this conversation. Awesome. This was so fun. Thank you so much. And where can people find more of you? Sure. LifestyleEntrepreneursPress.com. You can Google my name. I've done a lot of speaking and training for authors. Find me, connect with me on Instagram or Facebook. And if you're working on a book, want a publishing partner, then keep us in mind. Awesome. Thank you, Jesse. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. I'm so glad you joined us for today's episode of Man Alive. I hope you enjoyed our conversation and it gave you something to consider and explore in your life. If you like what you heard, I'd be so grateful for you to subscribe and write a quick review that helps men like you find us. And again, head over to shanajamescoaching.com slash quiz or text the word alive, A-L-I-V-E, to 44144 to get a sense of how you can become a better lover and leader. You'll start to see how you can be both more respected and desired in your unique and genuine way. If you don't feel as confident or as excited about life or love as you'd like to be, this quiz is a really great starting point and will guide you toward a more passionate love life and a more inspiring and successful career. So again, text ALIVE, A-L-I-V-E, to 44144 or head over to shanajamescoaching.com slash quiz. Join us each week for a new episode of Man Alive.